हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वीएलएसआई टेक्नोलॉजी इन दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग आई एन इम्प्लांटेशन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन द इंट्रोडक्शन टू वॉर्ड्स द आई एन इम्प्लांटेशन आई होप नाउ यू नो वॉट इज आई एन इम्प्लांटेशन ओके इन दिस प्रोसेस वी हैव हाई एनर्जी आय विच आर हिटिंग द सबस्ट्रेट सरफेस एंड दिस इज हाउ दे आर पैरेंट्रेटिंग इन साइड एंड दिस इज हाउ वी आर गेट गेटिंग द डोप्ड रीजन इन साइड द वेफर ओके इफ यू हैव स्टिल एनी डाउट अबाउट द आयन इम्प्लांटेशन एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन इट इज हाईली रिकमेंडेड दैट यू गो बैक एंड वॉच द प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑल्सो बिकॉज इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट ऑल ऑफ द बेसिक थिंग्स रिलेटेड टू द आयन इम्प्लांटेशन okay so today we are going to talk about the stopping mechanism if i have high energy ions which is hitting the wafer surface then it has to stop inside it okay so now we are going to discuss about two types of stopping mechanism for the ion implantation process okay first of all we are discussing some dopants that we are going to incorporate inside the wafer the first dopant is phosphorus its symbol is p atomic number 15 atomic weight around 31 it was discovered by henning brand at germany in 1669 you can see other uh, parameters related to it like the origin of name density of solid molecular volume velocity of sound electrical uh, resistivity refractivity reflectivity melting point boiling point thermal conductivity and the coefficient of linear thermal expansion now after that the application we know that phosphorus is having the atomic number 15 due to which it is used in various applications like for the manufacturing of n type dopant in diffusion in the ion ion implantation epitaxial growth and the polysilicon deposition it is used in the chemical vapor deposition also in the making of the doped glass like the phosphosilicate glass and the borophosphosilicate glass as well so there there are various sources of phosphorus like we have red phosphorus and then we have ph3 then we have pocl2 okay or pocl3 as well so all of them are the sources of phosphorus now coming to the arsenic arsenic is also a n type of dopant okay so here also we have n type of doped region formed if i am using the arsenic as the dopant its name you know its arsenic symbol as atomic number 33 atomic weight is around 75 it was known since the ancient times okay so we don't know who discovered it and uh, discovery date we don't know okay so it's uh, the name origin came from the greek word arsenikon which means yellow or pigment okay so now you can see the density you can see velocity electrical resistivity refractivity reflectivity melting point boiling point thermal conductivity and the coefficient of linear thermal expansion now coming to the applications it is used as a n type dopant in the diffusion i have already told you this it, it is used in the ion implantation process in the epitaxial growth process and in the polysilicon deposition process as well so there are various sources like uh, simply the arsenic as well as ash3 is its source now coming to the boron boron is a p type of uh, dopant atom we know about it so it is having the atomic number 5 it is a very small atom it is having the weight which is around 10.811 and was discovered by sir humphrey davy and joseph louis gay lussac in england in france at uh, 1808 okay you can see the origin of name density of solid molecular volume velocity of sound electrical resistivity reflect refractivity reflectivity melting point boiling point and thermal conductivity you can see the coefficient of linear thermal expansion as well now coming to the application as i have already told you it is used for the manufacturing of the p type of dopants in the diffusion process also it is used in the ion implantation process for the epitaxial growth and the polysilicon deposition also all of these are used in the uh, as a dopant in the chemical vapor deposition process of the silicate glasses like the boro phosphosilicate glass and the phosphosilicate glass so the main sources are uh, b2 okay b2h4 and bf3 okay so all of these are sources now coming to the stopping mechanism as i have already told you the ions when come and hit the substrate surface 
they stop inside the wafer and how they are stopping inside the wafer for that we have to understand the stopping mechanism the ion penetrate into the substrate and they collide with the lattice atoms and this is how due to the collision they lose energy and uh, because they are losing energy they are reducing in speed and this is how they are ultimately stopping after a lot of collision so gradually they lose their energy and they stop now there are two mechanism depending upon how they collide and with which atom they are in which particle they are colliding okay so if the iron is colliding with the nucleus it is called the nuclear stopping if the iron is colliding with the electronic cloud then it is electronic stopping as we know in the atom at the center we have a nucleus and around it we have various electrons revolving so the if the iron is coming it can either hit the nucleus or it can hit the electronic cloud so if it is hitting the nucleus it is nuclear stopping if it is hitting the electronic cloud it is electronic st uh, stopping so in the nuclear stopping we have the collision with the nuclei of the lattice atoms i hope you understood this if the atom or the ion is colliding with the nucleus of the wafer atom then what would happen the nucleus will be carrying most of the mass of the atom nucleus will be carrying all of the neutrons it will be carrying all of the protons so the most of the mass of the atom is con contained inside the nucleus okay so when a high energy ion is hitting the nucleus so there will be a lot of momentum generated and due to which there will be high scattering uh, present after the collision so there will be a lot of change in the direction of the ion if it is colliding with the nucleus of the atom and it will be causing a lot of crystal damage okay now coming to the electronic stopping okay in the electronic stopping we have the collision with the electronic cloud so we know the electrons are revolving around the nucleus now if an ion is coming and hitting the electrons around the nucleus so it is electronic stopping so the ions are mostly positively so the ions are mostly positively charged and then when it is encountered with the electronic cloud which is negatively charged there will be some scattering produced but this scattering is not so significant as the nuclear stopping okay or the nuclear scattering so it is a collision with the electrons of the lattice atom as i have already told you so the incident ion path is almost unchanged because the scattering is not much there will be less scattering due to the less mass of the ions and due to the less mass there will be less impact on the very high mass ion that is coming and hitting the wafer so the energy transfer is also very small but in the case of nuclear stopping the energy transfer was very large because there was a large momentum that was produced so the crystal structure damage is also negligible because the energy transfer is small so now coming to the total stopping power the total stopping power will be the combination of the nuclear stopping plus the electronic stopping so sn here represents the nuclear stopping se represents the electronic stopping so the total stopping is sn plus se if i have low energy and we have high atom uh, mass then we will be having mainly the nuclear stopping if i have the bigger atom it will be predominantly stopping with the help of nuclear stopping if i have the high energy and we have smaller atoms then we will be having the electronic st uh, stopping mechanism overpowering the nuclear stopping so in this case if small atoms are or small ions are hitting the wafer so we will be having more of electronic stopping so you can see here we have two types of stopping mechanism so now here if i have just the electronic stopping so in the case of electronic stopping the ions will go deep inside the wafer 
and it is not encountering any nucleus and there is no significant scattering and no significant change in its uh, actual path due to which it goes very deep inside the wafer surface and this process is called the channeling we are going to talk in detail about the channeling in the next video so now here if i have both nuclear stopping and the electronic stopping then it will be having uh, more and more of scattering and due to which there will be no in-depth penetration of the dopant atoms and the dopant atoms will be stopping near the surface only. Okay, then there could be a possibility of the back scattering also. The ions when come inside the wave surface, then they can come inside and there could be any possibility that the direction of the ions is going in the back side. So if the ions are moving in exactly the back side, this is called the back scattering. So now you can see the stopping power and the ion velocity. So if I have the lower ion velocity, it is evident here that the stopping power would be more due to the nuclear stopping. So the nuclear stopping is predominant if I have the lower ion velocity. If I have the higher ion velocity, then electronic stopping will be predominant over here. So now coming to the ion trajectory and the projected range. So the ion trajectory is the actual path that the ion is uh, following inside the wafer surface. So the ion will move inside the wafer and it can reflect or deflect from its actual path and it can follow any path, any random path and this is called the ion trajectory. So the displacement between the surface of the wafer to the point where the ion is stopping is called the projected range. So the projected range is the minimum distance value and the ion trajectory is the actual path followed by the ion inside the wafer and there could be any uh, random path in the ion trajectory but the projected range will always be a straight path. Okay, so you can see how we are having the projected range changed with the help of ion concentration and the depth from the surface. So you can see if I have higher and higher depth from the surface then the ion projection range will be increasing first and then it will be decreasing if I am increasing the depth more. Okay, so you can see if I am increasing the concentration the projected range will also increase and uh, then it will be decreasing uh, in decreasing then. So this is how we will be having the relationship between the depth and the concentration of the ion. So now if some ion is hitting the wafer surface, so which ions we are hitting the wafer surface with? It can be boron, phosphorus, arsenic or lead. So these are all the dopant atom that we want to diffuse inside. We have already talked about the properties of all of them and there I told you boron is the smallest atom. So you can see if I have the smallest atom it can penetrate deep inside so for the same implantation energy let's suppose the implantation energy is 100 you can see the projected range for the boron is maximum then the projected range for phosphorus then arsenic then lead and how I have these projected range the smaller the atom the higher would be the projected range. The smaller atom can penetrate deep inside the wafer. It can go deep inside the wafer without getting much of the collisions, the nuclear collisions and the electronic collisions. And this is how the projected range for boron would be highest than the phosphorus, arsenic and the lead. Now coming to the barrier thickness. How, what is the barrier thickness that is required to block 200 kilo electronic volt ion beam. So we have various surfaces. If I have the silicon surface, silicon dioxide surface, silicon nitride, aluminium or the photoresist surface. You can see we have various mask thickness. So this is the thickness that is required for the ions which is having 200 kilo electron volt ion beam to stop. So you can see for the silicon uh, we have we have around 0.2 around thickness 0.2 it is in micron 
for silicon dioxide we have somewhat less for silicon nitride we have less so this is the range for the uh, lead and then we have the higher and higher range for different type of dopants so you can see here uh, for aluminium it the thickness is further more and for the photoresist the thickness is further more if i compare the boron phosphorus arsenic and lead then the thickness required to stop iron that is boron in silicon is around 1 okay so 1 micron thickness is required for boron and for phosphorus ions around 0.7 micron thickness is required and you can see for arsenic around 0.3 micron thickness is required okay so as you can see from here if i have smaller atoms or smaller ions the more thickness is required to stop it due to the large projected range so i hope you understood each and everything that i have discussed in this video if you have still any kind of doubt you can put the doubt in the comment and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible i hope you like this video if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel and also do share it with your friends thank you so much